Well, good morning, guys. Wanted to do a quick little update here, and I'm not going to spend a tremendous amount of time this morning. I say that every week, but um, that's kind of where we're at with most of this stuff. So, I'm checking a message, a couple messages here I got. A um, few little things to talk about here. Part of it's about building our own parts. Part of it's about the price of things the way they normally are here and the price of things the way they are in the world and how it's affecting things here. So anyway, to kind of put things in perspective, I, uh, I noticed this the other day. And so I saved it to my watch list and I got an offer from the seller today. And, you know, I make a little bit of money off of the parts that I manufacture and you guys are good enough to purchase from me and I appreciate that but we also want to keep in perspective I said quite a bit that these little Atlas machines are way overpriced for what we're getting out of them um, and I ran across a perfect example and what I found was an Atlas Clausing model 4800 lathe with taper attachment and they want $1,800 for this lathe and I, the thing that brought this to the forefront today is I got a offer from the seller for $1,750, which is uh, $50 off of it. But I thought we'd take a look at it and kind of put things in perspective. You know, on an Atlas 10 inch or a 12 inch, you know, the, the older lays, the, the 10 inch like I normally deal with, these fools on Flea Bay are trying to get $1,500, $2,000, $3,000, $3,500 for these machines. And I keep saying they're a, uh, you know, eight hundred to a thousand dollar machine if they're in excellent condition and have all the all the accessories with them. And there again, none of them are in excellent condition. So, you know, most of these lays I value in the five to eight hundred dollar range, and I think that's a fair price for them. So let me um, I got to take a minute here and move around my my second screens here to so I've got a little better idea of what's going on. Um, and we're uh, we're here in my new office today so lighting's probably bad audio may be better maybe worse you know all of this stuff's going to be changed i've got a window behind me here that's showing some glare and i don't have lighting set up we're just kind of screwing around here but um things hopefully will get better as time goes on and i'm not going to show you the rest of the little office because i got crap stacked everywhere as is my normal thing so eventually we'll see a little bit more this is this room is by no means done and uh, you know behind me there's trim needs to go around that door in the back and we need to do some stuff but anyway nonetheless there's this Atlas clothing 4800 lathe with taper attachment want $1,800 for it and it says great condition oh, great condition Clausing 4800 lathe bearings were replaced in 2021 chucks were refurbished and adjusted as well it runs on 110 volts so plug in anywhere it comes with taper attachment a rare find rare find and it's you know it's none of this stuff is that rare but anyway there's only a couple of pictures here and we'll look at it now when they want all this big bucks for these little atlas 10 inches this lathe here and this is kind of ragged you know they're saying excellent condition or good condition whatever how are they done you know if you're wanting this much money out of it you should have at least cleaned it up a little bit this is kind of a ragged looking setup here but nonetheless the only reason i point this out and it looks like we've got a steady rest down here for it um the only reason i point this lathe out is they only want eighteen hundred dollars for this and this is going to be in reality at least three times the lathe the little atlas is um, one of the things you always want to look at is tooling costs, but this is not that big a machine to where tooling costs are going to be that much different than what you're going to use to tool an Atlas 10 inch. So just to keep things in perspective, and I keep saying these little Atlas machines are way overpriced and I feel they are, this is a better buy on, you know, than you're going to have on most, you know, 10 inch Atlases that they want. I guess they've got three pictures here. Um, you know this machine's dirty and grungy and, and things like that like I say to, to even want this much if I'm seeing one of these at a yard sale on um, Facebook marketplace or Craigslist something like that you know to me this is probably this is probably about a $1,500 machine you know I would be if I was searching for one in that thousand to fifteen hundred dollar range and you can't really tell condition of this other than just it's dirty and grungy and 
you know, as far as chips being on it and kind of in disarray. But this is probably a fairly solid machine for that twelve to fifteen hundred dollar market, you know, in that in that range. So just keep it in perspective. When they're wanting more than more than a thousand dollars for the little ten inch atlases, uh, you know, you don't don't get too caught up in that. As far as it being a bigger machine, it is a bigger machine. If a person's careful, takes their time, or you've got a couple, three guys, these are not a hard machine to move. You know, there's a little more to them. If you're trying to put them in your basement or something, that makes them a little more difficult. But most guys, if you're rolling this into your garage, this is not that big a deal to move. It's not that much more to move a machine of this size than it is a 10 inch atlas on a stand. So. Um, yeah, if you're just buying the lay, there's no stand or anything for it. You can throw it in the back of your pickup uh, and uh, the back of your SUV, for that matter, and you can get it home, and a couple of guys can fling it around. But, you know, this is it's not difficult to move these machines with a little bit of care and, and spend a little time doing it. You know, I mean, I, I move my planer around by myself, and it's 8,000 pounds. So um, all of my machines, other than just my Atlas machines, are uh, going to be at least this big, if not bigger. And for the most part, I move them around myself. So if you're careful, take your time. That's not really an issue. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show you about this. I thought that was really interesting because, uh, I think it's a, a good buy for what you're investing there. Anyway, let's move on and look at these very quickly. Cause there's a couple of interesting things here. Uh, let's start with our normal little, let's start with the Atlas Shapers and there's nothing here. There's oil pan that I think we've talked about before. And then these high priced guards that are on here, they're all from the same, from the same seller, you know, Shaper oil pan tray, excellent use condition. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, um, nothing really new under Shapers, under Mills. I don't believe there was really anything there either. Um... Yeah, I don't see a thing here. Underlays, there was some stuff that we found that I found kind of interesting. And maybe not, just not from the, uh, from the aspect of being air, uh, rare, from some of the things we can build. Now here's a 725 cross slide stop, and let's come back to that. There was only two or three other things other than that that are, well, there's always a few. But um, let's let's come back to that stop because I want to talk about it a little bit. We have new Atlas 10 inch laid lead screw USA made quick change models 36, 42, 48, 54 inch lengths. Brand new 349.99 and 28.83 shipping. Now this is from a, one of our sellers. Does new and used stuff. I feel is normally very overpriced, and um, they're producing a lead screw. And that's all. this is a picture of it. Nothing, nothing really to see here. I think they show the yeah they show the the print for it. So the prints are obviously been released for these. If somebody I don't have this print, I don't believe. Um, but a, a call to closing will normally get you this print. Um, let's go back and read the description on this very quickly here. And these are a custom build. New USA made 10 inch Atlas lead screws for the quick change model 10 inch lays with three quarter inch lead screws and have power cross feed. Exact fit. Comes with new nylon locking nut to replace the old double nut setup. Expect one to three weeks delivery made to order. So the only reason I find this interesting and, and a lot of these things, you know, I don't feel are worth replacing on, on an original machine. Yeah, you're going to have wear in this, but this is not going to really help you unless you replace the um, half nuts and you know, whatever else is associated with it, probably just the half nuts. But anyway, something to be aware of there. They want three forty nine ninety nine, three forty nine ninety nine for it, and twenty eight eighty three shipping. The only reason I find this interesting is I've seen these listed before from this seller. These are obviously a made to order thing, which is fine. There's no problem with that. And I realize that costs have gone up on materials. Uh, in in the world, I just uh, I just bought some more stainless for some of the little knobs that I produce, and um, since the last time I bought that, which has been probably six or eight months ago, why cost has gone up uh, probably about forty percent. I haven't figured the exact percentages, but um, off the top of my head, it looked to me like it was about a forty percent difference in cost. Um, I think that's huge you know, for the way things are in the world. 
and I do a lot with stainless and a lot with aluminum as far as bar stock and things and when I called my normal supplier and they know me pretty well there and they know what I do um, one of the first things out of his mouth was he said well we've taken a big a big price increase on aluminum and on stainless and uh, I said you're telling me that because you know that's primarily what I use and he says yes it is and we talked a little bit about carbon steel he said it's bumped up and down a little bit um, it hasn't taken quite the jump that both of these other ones have and the reason I bring this up is I seem to remember seeing this same listing offered but I think it was at least a hundred dollars less now I could be mistaken but it sticks in my mind that these were in the the 200 to 249.99 or 250 price range so we've taken a hundred dollar hit on these um, just in price over the last probably couple of months um, now I realize material cost has gone up which is why I prefaced that by saying that you know the last I bought was about 40% more and that was just this last week it was also stainless whereas this will be a carbon steel um, out of a piece of stock piece of material which is going to be a 12 foot length why you're going to I'm going to say with these lengths we're going to get an average of three lead screws out of that material if we take that same basic percentage that I think is kind of the normal that we're seeing in the in for steel supplies that's going to raise the cost of each of these lead screws in the 10 to 15 dollar range so um, cost of materials has gone up 10 to 15 dollars and we've raised the price a hundred um, I, I think these were not a good investment anyway to purchase these at the older price but I think we're being gouged on a lot of things and not just in the Atlas stuff and in, in a lot of things in the here in the states that we're buying and I don't know you know I'm sure this this uh, these costs are, are affecting other places in the world too um, but I, I think the uh, and I realize that labor costs and machining costs are going to go up too but we're going to give another hundred dollars for this same product that was overpriced to start with um, just be careful what you buy you know I mean this is to me this is not a good investment anyway I've kind of rambled on this so let's let's go on to the other stuff here um, Atlas Craftsman 10 12 inch lathe saddle wiper repair kit eight pieces factory brand new 3599 and 580 shipping um, these are four pieces of felt and four rubber backers for them um, these will be a these will be a project real real directly I need to I need to get around and produce some of these um, something we can do in our shop you know this is not a well I guess we could just look at the bigger picture and there's only one of these pictures but um, we've got some felts you know I think maybe we could do a little bit better with maybe a little bit heavier weight felt would not hurt to put on our on our machines even if these are actually factory stuff from clausing um, now I've seen these done without the the um, rubber backers and these are like a hard urethane or something I don't know exactly what they are anything that's going to be a fairly stiff backer is going to work this could be done with a with a standard wool felt from from McMaster you know you can buy different lengths uh, a big piece will probably cost you 10 bucks and then they kind of hit you a little bit harder on shipping sometimes but um, for 10 or 12 bucks you've got enough for 30 or 40 sets of these you know two or three lifetimes you can build wipers for any machine you've got and um, just a white wool so you could do those without a without a backer you know or you can put a rubber backer on which isn't gonna hurt and probably gonna be closer to factory and then a little bit thinner thinner felt on there so anyway just something to be aware of there I'm not gonna delve too deep into that um, there's a original Atlas Craftsman 10 12 inch lathe apron tail stock hand wheel a 9 23 and I'm not gonna go in and look at this but they're wanting 3275 and 1085 shipping I looked at this handle a little bit earlier um, it's not a bad looking handle you know I mean it's it's used um, doesn't look like it's been too abused doesn't look like it's broken any place that's probably not a very bad price for that if you're looking for one I'm uh, kind of looking for one for a six inch which is the what's the number on that one there was one listed here um, an m6-23 which is a smaller hand wheel I want one of these for on the back of my uh, mill index centers that I built or still have not finished but they want 49.95 and 9.85 shipping I won't give that much for it that's uh, that's too much money 
you know, I would I would probably give thirty dollars in shipping for one of these handles in good condition. Um, that's all they're worth, as far as I'm concerned. So that's all we got there. Now I've seen a bunch of ten model D lathe parts. Somebody's part of that one. Well, I know who it is. This is our this is our way overpriced seller. This is one that just will screw you every day of the week. Um, outstanding 1936 Atlas 10-inch model D lathe headstock spindle and bearings and shims parts. Well, that's his part number six seven seven six seven seven and twenty one seventy five shipping. Um, he wants three hundred dollars for it. Now you don't see a tremendous amount of Model D parts, and I, I guess if you're restoring one, it might be something worth looking at if you've got one that you're restoring, but. Um, the lathe that this came from was an abs in absolutely outstanding condition, pre-World War II, and it looked wonderful. You can see some of the same from the spindle bearings, complete part set minus the head, rare shape for one of these. Complete part set minus the head. By taking it off of the headstock, you made it absolutely worthless. Absolutely worthless. Let's just look at the big picture. So there's no sense in spending too much time. This spindle actually looks pretty good from the end. I didn't look at this too awful close just because I'm not, I don't care that much. Um, now there's no picture of inside the bore. So who knows if that, if that taper in there is scarred up, whatever it would, you know, normally be. If this was in the headstock, the whole assembly, since it was a Model D, might be worth $300 as a, as a original restoration. To retrofit back? No, he has screwed you here right now. Why would you take the caps off? The caps not only go with that headstock, but the Babbitt bearings are poured to this, to this spindle. Uh, no, it's junk, 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 devalued. Avoid this like the plague. This seller just does stupid stuff. You know, this is yeah. I got a few little marks here, but this is a good looking spindle. I would not be a, I would not be afraid to run this headstock with this spindle. But there again, you got poor Babbitt bearings that go with the headstock and go and are mated to that spindle. No, it's junk. You got crap. The only way this is good, there's a shim pack that would have gone to it. And it looks like with the shim pack, if they were still in the headstock, it would still be, you know, in good enough shape that as it wore, you could pull shims and, and have a good headstock on that lathe. Um, but no, now it's junk. Now he's got some. He's got some '96 tooth gears, which he says he's got two of them available. He wants a hundred bucks a piece for them. Uh, I believe they are in good condition, and he advertises as, as going with it with the uh, with the Model D. Um, I, I think they're the exact same gears that fit on any of the other ten inches. So that's no draw there. You know, and the one he's showing is just, they're greasy and grungy as crap. So this being in excellent condition and working wonderful, no, it's, well, there's a little bit of a picture of the end. Um, no, not worth, not worth doing. You know, there again, it's back to avoid the seller like the plague. You know, look at all the grunge on there. Now it doesn't matter, you know, he says this lathe looked excellent. There's 10 years of grime and crap on there. Piece of junk. Piece of junk would have been a good viable machine if it was all completely assembled, but he's he's screwed that up. Yeah, Atlas 9 10 inch model D laid 96 tooth change gear bore three quarter inch hundred bucks and 965 shipping. Nope, 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 nope. Here's still this vintage 1943 Atlas Craftsman hardwood lathe machine cabinet. Um, wants $445. Uh, zero bids or best offer free local pickup. This has been listed forever. It started out at four ninety nine. Uh, been here forever. Not uh, it's not worth that. You know, which is why he's still got it. But he just keeps listing it, figuring he'll find a pigeon someplace. Okay, the one I wanted to talk about is there's an Atlas Craftsman ten inch lathe number seven twenty five cross slide stop pre owned sixty nine ninety nine and twelve dollars shipping. Um, this I believe is all original. And let's see if there's anything in the description. Yeah, no, it just says what it is. The cross slide stop. So let's just look at the big pictures. This is a great shop project. And um, I, I might, this might be a next weekend project if I have nothing else going on. We may do, we may do one of these. 
This is a cross light stop. It's in okay condition. You know, I mean, there's nothing really to these, which is why I've never really followed up on them. But what Flea Bay will do for you oftentimes is it gives you all the information you need to replicate a part. And this is a perfect example. This listing tells you everything you need to know to be able to build this in your home shop. And this is not a not a difficult project at all. How useful are they? Eh, eh, maybe. But it's a neat little project. Big, good little skill builder. It lets you do a little bit of everything. This is all they amount to. We've got a piece of stock here. We've got dovetail at the bottom that matches the compound dovetails. We've got a quarter 20 screw going through it. I know it's a quarter 20 because that's primarily what Atlas uses in all of these. This is the standard knurled nut that they use on several things. Uh, one of them is the Atlas's multi-stop, which is the the uh, apron stop used with the with the production machines. Um, I started cutting patterns for these the other day, but I haven't finished them yet. Got working on other patterns for right now, but um, that's the same knurled nut that goes on there, and. I think the this little knurled knob is probably a custom knob. You can take a piece of ready rod, knurl you a little nut, and uh, thread that right on there. Whether it's Loctite, silver soldered, however you want to do it. Anyway, that's not a not a difficult thing on that end. This is I'm not sure if this is a five sixteenths or a three eighths threaded um, stud coming up through here. It's the dovetail is cut to match the one side of that. We've got a set screw locking it in position so it can't fall out and, and move itself around. But anyway, all the information you need to build it, build it is here. And if you look at the rest of the pictures, there's the side view. Got a relief cut in the center. We've got our dovetail to match there. And this is our stud coming down through here that locks it in position. If you look, you can see just the end of a set screw that goes into a probably a slot in the back of the stud going up through there. This is the other side of it. There's our little nut. And this was turned from one piece. But like I say, you could, if you don't want to turn it from one piece, you could use a piece of ready rod and, and do that. You could probably take a standard fully threaded bolt and uh, turn the hex off of it and knurl it and you'd have the exact same thing. There's the end view of it. Bottom view. There's your diameter. And we can ascertain that's probably a half inch diameter rod or started out as a half inch round stock there and the reason I know that is because if we go on down here well here we've got the length um, we are one two three and a quarter inch overall length we are three quarters of an inch tall Yeah, one, two, three and a half inches. And from the end, we are one inch in with our round stock, it looks like, going up through there to lock it. And we are five eighths of an inch wide, which leads me to believe that's probably a half inch bore right there. There's the end of that little dog screw coming through that's going to lock into the lock into the post or lock into that um, dovetail lock to keep it from falling out. And that's all there is to it. So, Anyway, these are good little shop projects. You know, it's is seventy dollars really expensive for it? For what it is, yeah, it kinda is. When you look at the parts in it, the machine time and everything, it's maybe not a bad deal, but I'm not gonna give that much for it, of course. We'd rather we'd rather build those in our shop. So anyway, that's what we got for you today. I just found that interesting. Um, you know, nothing nothing earth shattering that I felt like looking at but uh, it was worth a little perusal this morning and uh, anyway that's that's what we got here so comment suggestions leave them in the comments section for me below have fun in the shop and as always guys thanks for taking the time to watch